Hey kids, today we're looking back at Bud Light, because there have been many updates to the story, and we should talk about them. Make it a Bud Light. You're the defending ladies pool champion? Yes, I am. First and foremost, I want to get a small technical gripe out of the way. Bud Light just had their quarter one earnings call, which if you don't know, it's a publicly traded company, has to have calls with their biggest investors to report how much money they made and why they didn't make more. You may have seen many news reports from the first quarter about Bud Light's parent company posting strong results, increasing profits, record profits even. However, somehow, people get paid as journalists to type out entire articles without mentioning the fact that the entire controversy happened after the end of Q1. So what's happening? Q2. Well, how about two, count them, two high-level marketing VPs fired. Dylan is still completely silent as well. And so now, just a few weeks on, we find ourselves in a position where Bud Light has a lot more in common with Disney than, than any other beer brand because both companies are actually in a position now where they leaned heavily on the social politics of the day and it lost them billions of dollars. And so now they have to rebuke all that stuff and then get the backlash from the other side. Because you know what I think of when I think of these people? Beer drinkers and Star Wars fans. I mean, they're the stalwart part of the, the fandom. You guys are just hangers on. However, Disney has the benefit of an army of millions of piss babies who will simply buy the product and watch it, regardless of how bad it is. Very cool. 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 Bud Light didn't even change their beard. They didn't even put out a full ad. They just printed one can. And literally, it seems as though the Bud Light drinking portion of America said enough is enough. We are Americans. We get the most angry over beverages. We don't get why. <laughs> You see, as I alluded to earlier, Bud Light finds itself in a very similar position to a company like Disney. Disney decided that it was going to pair its increased messaging of LGBTQIA plus XYZ and BIOPOC creators with their worst content ever. And as a result of this full-throated political social messaging, they can't simply course correct because it looks bad. I admit it's a weird thing to say, but you'll probably never see two straight white dudes have a lightsaber fight on screen ever again in your life. Unless, of course, you know, you have a DVD player. All this to say these companies will spend years and billions of dollars doing anything other than apologizing or genuinely trying to make the mistake that they actually made, that they know they made, and that their customer base told them that they made. Right. But even still, first, the head who made those decisions simply had to roll. The CEO again must stress that this was not a formal ad campaign, which, although I do agree with, I only can find two other instances of a personalized can being sent out. One for this football player, which I guess technically this is a box, and then here's a Post Malone can. And that's about it. Also, they experienced the negatives of not fully committing to one side. Because even though they didn't fully apologize, they still regretted it openly enough for the LGBT community to also dump them and now have many gay bars not serving Bud Light at all either. Based. Also, other American beer brands such as Yangling are just eating their lunch, pouncing on the opportunity to make an easy commercial, an easy can with the red, white, and blue and make some easy money. Kind of like how Nintendo makes easy money with Mario just by making a kid's movie. It's just it's really that simple. I, for one, am glad that I didn't have to watch a movie about Mario and Bowser exploring their sexuality and gender identity. But of course, I am terminally online. And if you're also terminally online, then you know that normies just generally don't tend to know as much about these kind of things or care in the first place. So why is this so widespread? I think that's the interesting part of this. People in America will far more loudly support far more dumb, stupid, and antithetical political ideas than just supporting Dylan Mulvaney, if we're going to be honest. This may go down in history as being simply one of the worst marketing decisions ever made. I really, really don't think the average American actually cares that much, let alone has that much of a negative opinion of Dylan. Honestly, I'm just saying I think a rap concert at a NASCAR event would go over much better than this. I mean, let's check out some clips from the field. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever want to know when American conservatives are united together? Just look out for the black redneck, especially them big boys. Also, off topic, but have you guys ever seen the Mexicans do the dance to the song? 
This next video showcases a man angrily destroying bush light and bush beer in the Walmart. This video has become very popular in the left wing circles surrounding this controversy because apparently he's destroying quote unquote the wrong beer. Oh shit! Jeez. What the fuck? Oh, that's why he's destroying. Of course, as you know, Anheuser-Busch owns Bush. Just further showcasing how the crowd of people who supports Dylan Mulvaney knows nothing about beer or drinking. I don't even think they know anything about can. I mean, I do barely researched off the top opinion pieces on YouTube and somehow I'm more correct than these goddamn news organizations. Did you guys know that companies pay for the specific placement they get in supermarkets? Bro, this is how desperate Budweiser is. They had Walmart move their products right to the front entrance of Walmart. Walmart. And look, and look, and look. Right by the cups, not a single package taken. Ah, that's probably just one Walmart. Yeah, but that's only two Walmarts. So this is working. All right, well look, look. Anheuser Busch. Oh my God. Anheuser Busch. Anheuser Busch. Oh, that's Coors Light. <laughs> yeah, not Anheuser Busch. And that. Oh my God. Yep. Sure, sure, sure. But we all know that only a low IQ Republican shop at Walmart anyway. What if we locked 20,000 people on a hot day in a baseball stadium and made them wait in line for anything other than Bud Light? Very cool. Ah, wait, no, I got it. I have the perfect idea. What if we lock a bunch of alcoholics on a cruise ship and send them out in the middle of the ocean? Can I get a Bud Light, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. America! But to be fair, I have a bias. Maybe I'm just showing you biased opinions. Let's see the positive side of this for Dylan and the Bud Light. Hi Dylan, just wanted to let you know that your friends from the cast of the Book of Mormon love and support you, are so proud of you, and for Anheuser Bush, we are really proud of you for making an American superstar in your can. Love ya! There you go, Dylan, get that chin up. You sold one whole 12 pack. I'm Bear Grylls, completely lost in a desert, and without water for three days, I have a decision to make. Drink my urine or this cold Bud Light I miraculously stumbled across. For me, the choice was simple. As horrible as it was, it was still better than that god-awful beer. Also, people began doing experiments, simply leaving a selection of beer out to see who would take it even for free. But now it's finally time to throw all of these anecdotes aside, because the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation Limited itself, folks, that's right, HSBC, has officially downgraded Anheuser-Busch stock. That's right, folks, they can no longer sit at the cool kids table. Very interested to see how far this will go. In the end, will America be down one brand of piss? Like, sub, see you soon.